Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Bruce Cushion, CEO of uh, Dracula Technology. I'm really happy to, to present this uh, final workshop for, from MAMA project uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to start uh, in a few minutes with the general presentation of MAMA by Kamel Adadi from uh, Yemen, the um, project leader of the, of the project. Um, and um, we're going to present uh, two parts about the integration and demonstration of the techniques, different techniques uh, in uh, our pilot line. I mean, uh, sheet to sheet pilot line for Dracula technology and uh, roll to roll pilot line uh, for adamant composites. And uh, we're going to make a focus about two, uh, about the techniques from the electric resonator from uh, QWED and uh, Mata Yanova can con make a conclusion of the, this workshop about the energy materials and structure for the validation of macro -earth characterization. So, uh, um, Kamel is going, beginning the, this uh, workshop and, uh, and uh, you can ask uh, some question uh, at the end of the of the of each uh, presentation, uh, you can write your question, and uh, the different uh, uh, particip participants uh, are going to answer you. So, come here. You can start. So, thank you, thank you, Brice, for this introduction. So, good morning to to everybody. So uh, just would like to begin by give you a general overview of uh, the MAMA project. So MAMA project stands for microwave microscopy for advanced and efficient materials analysis and production. Uh, this project has begun in the end of uh, the year 2017 and it will end in October of this year. This project has been funded by the European Union through the program H2020 MMDP. The main topics which are addressed within MAMA are the development of uh, microwave based characterization method technology with a focus on high performance and capabilities, the establishment of electromagnetic three dimensional modeling and associated softwares for advanced materials. The validation of the high frequency characterization technology in both microwave and millimeter wave frequency bands of new reference materials and structures for um, alternative and sustainable energy. The demonstration, so I mean the implementation of multi-scale microwave imaging technologies for pilot scale production. We will have a nice examples in this discussion. And uh, the development of uh, SOP, standard operating procedures, and open innovation environment through the Zenodo community. So for further information, you can always visit our website. The link is given below. Here is the value chain of the MAMA project. So we have different uh, uh, works. The first one is technology development, which is led by uh, IMN, Institute of Electronics, Macro Electronics and Nanotechnology in France. Uh, product development, so led by Tissai Technology in Austria. The validation by Matteo Nova in Belgium. We have uh, two end user and uh, material provider uh, for demonstration, Dracula Technologies in France and Adamant Composites in Greece. The modeling and open platform are led by uh, Quaid in Poland and supported also by ETS Zurich in Switzerland. Uh, standardization are done uh, by the National Metrology Institute in Switzerland, METAS. And finally, Eming in France is in charge of the dissemination and the exploitation plan. So we have here a map which summarizes uh, the project partners. Uh, just want to focus a little bit on the materials. So we have uh, two 
companies, Dracula Technology and Materia Nova, which provide organic materials with different fabrication process, deposition process, and also uh, different devices such as photovoltaic cells and uh, uh, whole only and electrical only devices. Adamant Composites is working mainly on carbon-based composite. The deposition are done uh, through a wall-to-wall -wall, uh, pilot line, and this concerns graphite microfibers with polymeric poly, polymeric sorry older uh, nano enable preprex, and finally electrodes for batteries and super cups. MAMA project is divided into eight work packages. The first one is dedicated to the development of uh, scanning microwave microscopy. So it means development of microwave methods at the nanoscales. Whereas WP2 will be more focused on the calibration uh, routines development in order to achieve quantitative and physical data from the measurement foreseen in WP1. Uh, WP3 will support the two first packages by the development of electromagnetic 3D modeling and associated softwares. WP4, so we will focus on the fabrication and the characterization on reference materials and structures for the validation of the scanning microwave microscopy at the laboratory scale, so mainly uh, using uh, uh, microscopy tools. In WP5, where we foresee the demonstration of macroscale microwave characterization technique directly in the inline pilot production. In WPC, we focus on the development of SOP and the open access environment uh, for the stakeholders and external users. Uh, communication, dissemination, and exploitation are done within WP7. And of course, WP8 is the project management. So now a few words on the scientific and uh, technological developments because we want to present uh, a whole of the outputs of the project in this uh, industrial workshops. So we have developed two kinds of uh, instrumentation. The first one is uh, clearly oriented to, towards nanoscale electrical properties measurements with uh, the objective of uh, developing fundamental extension of the scanning microwave microscopy technology. So we have uh, three partners, Eysight, IMN, Metas, where we develop uh, three systems which performance are far beyond the state of the art. The first one is a wideband gigahertz open air atomic force microscopy with electrical capabilities from very low frequency up to the microwave regime. And the highlight is that uh, an electrical resolution um, as low as 0.01 atofarad resolution has been achieved. The second one is a scanning microwave microscope which operates in the millimeter wave regime up to 110 gigahertz. And this system has been fully integrated in the scanning electron microscope, given the possibility to have access to the vision of the probe in contact with the sample during uh, scanning operation. Finally, the third system is a 50 gigs open air vertical tuning for based SMM developed by METAS. Uh, this is a laserless system and it makes use of uh, an original microwave probe, which is uh, in coaxial structures, which is fully shielded and which preserves the well known 50 ohm reference impedance commonly found in uh, conventional microwave instrumentation. Now we have also developed some macro scale uh, measuring tools to be implemented for pilot scale production. Uh, this is a very nice collaborative works with uh, people, labs, companies coming from different fields. The first one uh, led by QUED is the direct hook resonators, uh, which is a system that can be used to measure very accurately the complex permittivity. So, the directly constant and the last tangent of a material under test. And this system has been extended to offer for the first time two dimensional imaging capabilities. The second one, led by uh, Kisai Technologies, 
is the impedance spectroscopy, which bridge the gap between very low frequency up to the macrofs, given the possibility uh, to have a number of frequency decades to study the material properties. And finally, the last one is the continuous wave with space monostatic radars, uh, up to meter wave. So different uh, system has been developed for different frequency of operation, and it allows to determine the material properties in a contactless manner and therefore in a non-destructive way. Regarding the modeling activity, so the wide number of activity led by QUED and ETH Zurich, this concerns the establishment of a 3D electromagnetic modeling, but not only, also we develop some uh, algorithm to reconstruct, for example, the original sample from the imaging using the, uh, the experimental data. And one big focus has been made also on the electromagnetic simulation of uh, nanoscale probing. This is very important to study the electromagnetic distribution of the field in the vicinity of the probe and the samples, uh, which are used for a better understanding of the wave to material interaction. METAS has developed the open access environment. So this has been done with the an MBP project for um, easy interaction with the project partners, but also with our stakeholders. The metadata has been also implemented for the scanning macro microscopy and ma also macro scale um, measuring tools with the main idea to have the data which are uh, easily findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable by external users. And this data has been also integrated in open source file using region software. We have worked also on the metrology and uh, this concern how the macros methods that has been developed through the MAMA project, uh, nanoscale scanning macro microscopy, impedance spectroscopy, coaxial probing, and finally, dielectric resonators. Uh, standard operating procedure have been developed. These ones are compatible with the industrial partners and the stakeholder uh, specification. And also, uh, this metrology work has been completed by a data set and specific challenges for the users. So this close this uh, introduction and this overview of the of the MAMA project. And uh, if there are some questions, it would be a pleasure to answer. If not, uh, I will ask to Sadok from Dracula Technology uh, to, 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 to give a talk regarding the demonstration of microscale micro acquisition techniques in Dracula Technology pilot line production. Do you have our screen? So hello, Sadok from Dracula Technologies. So uh, before starting my presentation, let me first thank all the organizers for this workshop. Of course, thanks to the, all the partners of the project for the hard work during the last three years. Uh, so my presentation is going to be divided into three parts. In the first part, I'm going to provide a very brief introduction to the sheet-to-sheet -sheet pilot line uh, of Dracula Technologies, used for the production of our organic photovoltaic modules. 
Then I will try to go through uh, the most important results uh, related to the integration of uh, two different techniques, the impedance spectroscopy measurement and the dielectric resonator measurement in Dracula pilot line for the production of our organic devices. And then I will finish by some conclusions and uh, perspectives. So today uh, I will try to tell you maybe uh, a few words concerning Dracula Technologies company. So uh, today we are adopting the inkjet printing as a digital technology in order to produce our, our organic photovoltaic modules. And for that, uh, we need to, 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 to let's say, to subdivide our process to different steps. Uh, the first one uh, start by selecting the design of our modules. We have just to select uh, the, the structuration of uh, for the different printed layers. Then uh, the second part is to the ink formulation. Today in Dracula, we are developing our, uh, mainly the ink formulation of the different materials by ourselves, based on uh, the available organic materials. And then we have to print the, these different layers with our machine. And of course, the last step should be the, the encapsulation of uh, these devices before we were the, doing any measurement. So today, uh, the organic photovoltaic modules generated by Dracula Technologies uh, are dedicated for indoor application. Then they should be compatible with artificial uh, light sources. Uh, and mainly with our devices, we are able today to, to, to power the IFT and FEID uh, devices uh, by only uh, harvesting the available energy. Now we don't uh, we don't need to put our modules outside in order to generate. We are able even in indoor conditions to to, uh, to generate and to obtain high efficiencies. Our process today is composed by different steps, but the main one the main one is to do printing for the different layers in order to guarantee the performances as well as the stability of our modules. We should uh, have a good control on the different printed layers, which are from three to four printed layers. And then for each one, we have to do a post treatment in order to, to, to anneal solvent and then to obtain thin films. These thin films should be homogen. The roughness should be very low and the thickness should be really, we have good control it in order to, to guarantee the good performances. For that, we need at each step and after printing each layer, we should control this, this all these parameters. And especially for some layers, we should control the conductivity as we need to extract just charge and put them in the external circuit. So we have to use uh, some conductive layers. And then we have to measure the, uh, the, the conductivity of the diff these different layers. You will see that uh, during this project, we, uh, we, de we uh, developed with the collaboration with the, the different partners and we validated different methods in order to help us to, to have all this information to uh, validate our process. So why it's important uh, to, to have homogeneous and rough, uh, smooth, really smooth layers, and why we have to control the thicknesses and the conductivity of the layers because it's the most important, important uh, let's say, uh, condition in order to guarantee the performances and, of course, the stability of the devices. And as we have thinner layer in general between 30 to uh, a few hundred nanometers, so we need really uh, to, 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 to be careful as at this scale, uh, we have different phenomena which can uh, degrade the performances if we don't have any control on the different layers. So for that, uh, we validated and we uh, did several measurements and several verification using different techniques, which are mainly the impedance spectroscopy and the dielectroresonator method in order to uh, characterize our OPV modules and uh, to characterize our, the different printed layers in order to, to be able to, 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 to go to the production. Uh, so, uh, sorry. Just have to do the next slide. Okay. So I will start by giving you, uh, the, the, I will start to give you some uh, results, maybe the most important results uh, using uh, based on the, these two different techniques, 
And I will start with the, 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 the evaluation of the performances of our devices and our printed layers based on the dielectric resonator technology uh, and in our pilot line. Uh, here, what we see is the device structure adopted by Dracula Technologies, and we can clearly see that we have uh, five layers. Maybe we have uh, we can obtain even three layers, but in this device, in this particular device structure, we have four printed layers from the ETL for electron transporting layer, the active layer, then the whole transporting layer, and then of course the put of electrodes. So we uh, we try to print it several layers in the same condition uh, in our OPV modules. And then to be characterized by a uh, cuet with the dielectric resonator. Uh, all the substrate in this part are deposited, are printed on quartz substrate. So here I will do. Uh, it was some um, typical measurement done already by uh, cuet on our on our printed layers. And uh, I just tried to take two two examples for the active layer and for ETL layer. And here we can see the two two dimension scan uh, results based on this technique. After integrating this technique in our also pilot line, as you can see uh, in the picture, in the photo here, we can see that we have our printer. And just near to the printer, we have this system for SPDR and uh, SAPDR uh, measurements, which is very important in this, uh, in this uh, 2D scan uh, images, is that the resistivity of the printed layer is not uniform on the surface, on the total surface, which for us a good indication. As today, to guarantee the performances, we should have uniform, as mentioned before. We should uh, we should uh, found we should develop uniform layers. And if the resistivity is not uniform, it means the thickness is not uniform. But also, it means we can have some impurity or we can have uh, some other problem inside the bulk. So, the reason why uh, this technique at this level it can give us an information about the homogeneity of uh, and it's able to select and to distinguish if whether the layer is uh, homogeneous or not. Uh, this is uh, something for us important. And also, this technique can give us additional information. As we can see, for example, there is two ways to, 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 to do the measurement. The first one is the two-dimension SPDR, which in general is compatible with materials uh, with limited conductivity, like, for example, the organic materials, for like the active layer or the electron transporting layers. And the second uh, way is the SEPDR measurement, which in general is compatible and so more suitable with high conductive materials like the HTL or uh, the top electrodes. Donc, uh, with the good uh, news for us is that in both cases and with the two methods, our uh, printed layers are measurable with this technique, uh, which allows us to determine uh, in all cases the resistivity of the different printed layers. And we can clearly see that, for example, if we take the example of the active layer, you can see that we obtain a high, resistive, uh, high resistivity for in order of uh, several uh, kilo ohm centimeter for this layer, which is somehow uh, consistent with what already uh, observed for uh, similar materials. So uh, for that, we, we concluded that uh, uh, this technique is able to give us uh, important information in order to evaluate the quality uh, and the performance of our OPV devices. Concerning the particular case for the active layer, the specific layer is the most important layer in our device structure, as it's the layer which absorbs the light and then generates the electrons, the electricity. So reason why we need more specification concerning this layer, and the reason why we try to uh, also do different measurements based on the impedance spectroscopy techniques, which, uh, as I will show you, which is also today able to give us uh, very, very precise and important information to understand the behavior, how uh, uh, the active layer behaves, and why, in some cases, we have limited performances with our OPV devices. For that, we did uh, very, very efficient collaboration with uh, Materianova and Keysight on this, uh, on this technique.
So I will just, in this uh, slide, I, I will just tell you a little bit about, uh, again, the, div the device structure used by Jacqueline Technologies. And concerning the active layer, uh, just to tell you that, in general, it's composed by two different materials, the donor and the acceptor, the polymer and filler and derivatives, which are, in general, randomly distributed inside the, uh, the bulk. Today, uh, it's known that the mobility of hole and electron is not the same, knowing that the hole should be transported by the donor and the electron by the acceptors. And if the mobility of the hole and the electron is not the same, it can create some problem in the performances. And to control and to determine these values, uh, we need uh, su such technique, the impedance spectroscopy. For that, with the material nova, and specifically, especially material nova are developed, a device structure which is compatible with our materials in order to determine all these parameters, the hole and the electron mobilities, based on which is called the metal insulator semiconductor structure. And here we, uh, with this technique, we are able to determine the carrier mobility uh, of uh, our active layer. Most, an important parameter is, uh, in general, we can observe some uh, specific behavior with our device structure, like the S shape, for example, which is an indication that we have some problem. It can be uh, due to the bulk itself. Uh, here, if we have, for example, again, uh, the whole mobility different from the electron mobility, it can create some accumulation of charge at the interfaces. Then we can obtain a capacitance effect. And this capacitance effects will create electron field, which can uh, perturbate the, the, let's say, the transport inside the, 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 the complete device, and of course, degrade the performance of our devices. Uh, such technique can determine the, if we have this capacitance effect or not, and then we can even determine uh, locally uh, at which interface we can have this kind of, of uh, phenomena. So for that, uh, we uh, we try to 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 realize for uh, several times some devices based on this device structure, the metal insulator semiconductor device. Uh, we we made different uh, let's say structure in order to be able to extract all these parameters, and then uh, with material nova. Uh, we uh, make the measurement and then we, we, we demonstrated that uh, what that this device can be realized uh, can be printed uh, with Dracula Technologies printer and then we can uh, determine all these important parameters uh, in line process. Here, for example, we can see in this photo the key site impedance analyzers. Uh, he said today it's still in Dracula Technologies and we are uh, still uh, doing some measurement with this uh, impedance analyzers. And also we demonstrated in our uh, pilot line that we are able today to implement and to do this kind of measurement and to determine all these uh, critical parameters to understand more, to have more understanding of our uh, device structure and to determine the performance of our OPV modules. So uh, today, uh, just to, to, to tell you uh, about, uh, let's say, the state of Jacqueline Technologies today, we started our uh, LG uh, development using a printer, the Origin D100 printer. Uh, we, and with this printer, we uh, the capacity of production is really limited for several uh, reasons. And then currently, we are using more robust printer in order using four print heads in order to have to increase this capacity of production. And then here we need more, uh, more let's say, uh, additional technique of characterization in order to be able to characterize all the produced modules and layers and printed layers. And the target is in the end of uh, 2021 is to go to the large scale production using this big machine of production. And uh, this will be done in, uh, at the end of the next year. And for that, we need uh, that time, we need really uh, to, to, to implement this kind of uh, techniques in order to control, to have a good control on the other parameters during, during the printing of the different layers. 
So as a conclusion, uh, today we demonstrated in collaboration with the different partners of the project the potential of this two different techniques, impedance spectroscopy and the direct resonator system. Uh, this is something which is already integrated in our pilot line in order to control and to determine the property of the different printed layers. And uh, we are happy as we demonstrated that it's something feasible and all the obtained results are, uh, are really consistent. Uh, These two techniques uh, of characterization are really complementary and provide us helpful and useful information to, for the understanding of our produced OPV modules. Each one uh, are already uh, validated in specific conditions and both uh, methods are really uh, useful for us. As a perspective, uh, and as we are today going toward the, the large scale production with this uh, big machine, this production machine, uh, I think today with our need to implement this uh, this kind of, te of techniques is really important. The reason why we have to think about the integration of these techniques uh, in our production line, but also we have also to think about the automation of uh, this kind of measurement in order to be more efficient to produce our uh, OPV modules. And thank you for your attention. Please, uh, if you have any questions, or don't hesitate. If you have some question, uh, you 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 have uh, you can write it, and uh, we'll go see. Uh oh, uh, you can ask question. Okay. There is no question. Okay. There is no presentation. There is no question. Okay. So, if uh, if there is no question, I, propo I propose to uh, to introduce uh, Adamant, and uh, Adamant can share his screen in order to do his presentation. Uh, so, okay, yes, okay. yes, we can hear you. Okay, good morning, everybody. I'm Gregorius Kutsukis from Madam and Composites. Um, let me see how I can remove this. No. Uh, uh, I need to minimize that, I guess, sir. somehow. Uh, it's okay, I guess, there. Okay, good morning once again. I'm Gregorius Kutsuki from Adam and Composites. Uh, I'm here to present the integration of the free space antenna developed. Uh, Within MAMA just project, in sorry, just a moment. Uh, I'm not sure that the different part participant can see your screen. We can see the screen. You can see? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Should I proceed? <laughs> so you can go. That's fine. Sorry. Okay, okay, fine, fine, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you once again. So, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm here um, uh, to present you the integration of the free space antenna into our road to road pilot line. Uh, but not only, also, I will present uh, some of the work done uh, uh, with the collaboration within the MAMA project and the work done on some of our materials. So an overview of uh, an overview of this presentation, uh, the introduction. I will give you some facts about our company and what we do. Uh, then I will give you the logic uh, behind the Mama project for an SME uh, like Adamant, and I will present you the work that I've told you on some pre-pre samples and some composite samples that we did with the partners of the project. 
Uh, then I will uh, present the um, integration of the fish pest antenna system into a road-to-road -road pilot line for the production of the nano-enabled free pregs. And at the end, I will give you, as a conclusion, a roadmap of the MAMA technologies uh, regarding Edelman's products. So, Edelman Composites is a privately held industrial SME working on advanced materials and structures. Uh, with a focus on innovative materials, composite and advanced manufacturing, and deployable space structures. Um, the business has founded in 2012. It's a limited liability company. The main facility is in Patras, but we also have offices in Athens, the capital of Greece. Um, we have usually between 16 and 20 employees, our industrial facility is 1,100 square meters. Uh, we participate in more than uh, five EU Horizon 2020 R&D projects and at least 10 uh, technology activities with the Europe, European Space Agency. We are set, certified at, uh, under ISO 9001. And yeah, generally, um, we have growth approximately of 25% per year and annual revenues around 600 euros. Uh, at the right hand side of the uh, screen, you can see some of uh, our customers over these years. Uh, generally, the products and services that we offer uh, are around, of course, innovations in material, materials. We are working with deployable structures for space applications, uh, sandwich panels, again, for space application, but also other applications, CFRP storage. Uh, and then we have, uh, let's say, the material technology with the FX phone adhesives, the FX flight repress, which also was the case of the pilot line investigating uh, within the MANA project, and generally with technology piloting. So, what I was saying before is, uh, what is the logic behind the MAMA project for an SME? At least for Adamant Composite, what we, what we were looking at was to see how nano and micro characterization using these microwave techniques that MAMA was offering could help us in micro characterization, micro characterization and product design. So to gain in love and knowledge about our materials and help us improve the design of our products. And also, if we were seeking for a characterization, a contactless characterization method to integrate in our part, in our road-to-road -road pilot line for quality control reasons. And that's what uh, MAMA project offered us. So uh, going to present you a little bit about the work done with our partners. Uh, here we have uh, the work done with uh, QHead. Uh, we used uh, their um, single post resonators to test our pre preg materials. Uh, the, the case there was to get a bit uh, of a hint to see how, how our pre preg materials behave uh, how uh, our doping process helped in improving the electrical conductivity and also do a quality check on the, uh, the surface. Uh, generally, we, we measured very different materials like woven pre preg materials or unidirectional materials, and we gained some important uh, information on, on uh, how, let's say, the electrical conductivity in plane uh, differentiated differentiates between the different types of preprecs. Then again, on the preprec samples, we did uh, some measurements with the free space uh, antenna system developed by IMN. And uh, here you can see uh, some results uh, to show on the same preprec type, how the different amount of the dopant affects, let's say, the response that we can get. And at the end, we can correlate this with pr the property under investigation. At this time, it was uh, the electrical conductivity. This test also helped us optimize this system 
to further uh, integrate it in, into our road-to-road -road pipeline, which we'll see later on in the in this presentation. Using this pre uh, that we produce, then we can go and uh, manufacture some composite parts. Uh, in order to do that, usually pre is the single layer. We, we use multiple layers of this material in different orientations, as you can see at the bottom right uh, uh, angle, let's say. We use a typical vacuum bagging sequence, and in order to consolidate the material, to compact it and to cure it so that the polymerization uh, proceeds, we use an uh, autoclave, which is uh, uh, aerospace rated. And then we, we, you can see a typical curing cycle here. Oh, sorry. We have. Uh, Temperatures up to 180 degrees, pressures up to five bars, seven bars, and uh, usually vacuum goes from, uh, let's say, minus one to zero. Here is the composite, uh, let's say, samples that we produced, and then we did the, some investigations with the partners to see what happens in their cross sections and get some good insight of how our doping process improves the properties of the material. So with Keysight, we did some SMM where we could see, let's say, also the topography of the sample, but also, uh, let's say, we were able to map the conductance. And here we see, let's say, the difference between a reference sample where we don't have um, any dopants and a treated one where we have the dopants. Uh, the, the difference it's, uh, that we can see is uh, mainly, you see, fibers usually are conductive, but the matrix around the, the fibers is an insulator. So what we are trying to see is how we improve conductivity in, in the matrix area. But what's very important for, for us, sorry, is the interface between two consecutive layers. And that's a work that we have started to do now. And we, we are happy to see some nice first results. Uh, then uh, together with IMN, Kamel uh, previously presented a nice setup that they have done with SMM and uh, STM together. And also they have an FEM module there. So we were able to get some nice topology, let's say pictures about uh, the roughness of our samples. And then you can see at the right some nice uh, um, SEM pictures of the probe uh, going to touch our sample. Uh, finally, uh, with our uh, composite sam samples, we did some uh, nice work also with Materia Nova. Uh, we did some SEM where we we took, let's say, the physical morphology. We we found, let's say, the additional fillers that we put, and then doing some conductive atomic force microscopy. And um, we were trying to see how uh, the current is being conducted through our uh, samples. So the idea is to check. Of course, we we see here that the fibers are the most conductive part, but also we're trying to see what happens between the fibers and also in the interface of the layers. So going to let's say the main uh, issue here of the presentation, which were the which is the integration of the free space antenna system developed by IMN. In our road-to-road -road process, I will give you a short overview of the process that we, be, that we do in Adam and Composites to add uh, specific properties to the pre -breaks. So we have a road-to-road -road process starting from the left. We have the unwinding station where we have uh, the mother material, the reference pre preg roll. It goes through the scattering step where we introduce the dopants in the form of a uh, uh, master batch powder. Uh, then there is the compaction process. Uh, we use a specific uh, machine for that, using where we use heat and pressure to compact the powder with the um, substrate prepreg. 
and then at the end we have a station when we, where we can remove the protective film that we insert for the compaction process or we can leave it and wind it at the end as the final product. Uh, what you should, can see uh, as magnifying glasses are three positions that we have identified in the MEMA project as positions that where it, we could integrate the free space antenna system. We decided to integrate the system at, at control point number three, where we can invest in, with, where we can check the quality of the final product with or without the uh, protective film. Uh, as you can see, that's the at the bottom. The pictures depict, let's say, this quality control module that we built in order to integrate the free space antenna system into our road to road pilot line. Uh, and of course, we have to mention that we use uh, Keysight's uh, Field Fox VNA to do the uh, all the measurements. Here you can see this uh, platform integrated into a roll-to-roll -roll pilot line at the position uh, control point number three. Here I will present a small presentation of the inline measurement that we did. That's the line. You see the unwinding, the scattering. That's uh, the dedicated machine that we use for the compaction. And now we can see uh, the dedicated module running in real time during an actual production. Here you can see the material is with a protective film and that's uh, most of the cases for our productions. And that's very nice that we have a contactless method that can measure our materials also using uh, our protective film. Here's some close-up of uh, some measurement at different points. So we have uh, done some nice work here and a general overview again of the production line. Okay, and at the end, uh, I provide you a roadmap that we have, uh, let's say, seen at the end of the project. Um, this is how we, let's say, the logic that I gave you at the beginning, that's how we, we see a bit of exploitation of the results of the program. Uh, you can see at the left side some of uh, the products of the company. It's the for the FX Ply prepreg and the composites that we can produce from the of this prepreg, the FX Ply adhesives that we usually uh, intend for uh, printed circuit boards. Uh, we have now under development some in situ graphene production on uh, prepreg substrates, and also we have some coded electrodes. Uh, graphene-based coated electrodes for batteries and supercapacitors that we also tested within the MAMA project. So the idea here is that we have two levels, let's say, of uh, exploitation. One is the one that we told you as quality control and product design, so how we can use the measuring techniques uh, presented in MAMA in order to help um, the improvement of our products and uh, help us also understand them better. And the pink, let's say, level uh, more to the right uh, has to do with the pilot line and how to integrate a sensing system uh, that will help us with the quality control and let us uh, make our process more robust and at the at the long run, reduce uh, the scrap rate of the produced material, so also the cost of the production. And the idea also here is that in the future, maybe it would be nice to see this sensing system cooperating with, uh, let's say, an uh, artificial intelligence algorithm like machine learning. So we have like an automated quality control process uh, which will help us also improve the labor productivity, but also 
make a very quality qualitative process at the end. Uh, so, as you can see in the first level, most of the techniques that we used uh, in the product, in the project of the MAMA project, sorry, like SMM from Keyside and IMN, CAFM from Materia Monova, the Free Space Antenna System, of course, and the resonators from Qubit, uh, they have already been tested. They look promising for a lot of our. Uh, products, but also they look promising to be tested in the products that we haven't tested yet. Uh, for the pilot line, of course, you can see some dashes because uh, not for all the products that we present here, we don't have a pilot line. Uh, we don't produce a, such a large uh, volume, let's say. Uh, so it's not relevant to talk about them, but of course, we have already tested the free, the free space antenna system in, in the roll to roll pilot line, and it looked very promising. And of course, also re resonators from Qubit can be tested uh, further to see how we could integrate them in the roll to roll pilot line. And the same, uh, and the same, let's say, technologies would be interested to be tested for the in situ graphene production because this is also something to be integrated into a road to road pilot line. So that's it for me. Thank you for your attention and please feel free to ask questions if you have. Any questions? Mm. There is no question at this moment. Then thank you, everybody. Thank you, Brice. Maybe we can continue. I just, Glorious, I just sent a, a message uh, about all the on all the participants. Uh, if they have some question, because we need to write the question so that we can wait for a few seconds. Okay. Okay. So, if there is no question, I'm going to share the screen with the uh, QED and Margozata. Yeah. <laughs> And Margot Zata, it's uh, your time in order to present the geometric yes. resonator measurement. And you have 20 minutes for your presentation and okay. for the question. Can you see the screen? Can you see yes. my screen? Yes, you can see. And do you see it as a uh, single uh, slide or you can see also the side um, panel? Okay. We see the two slides, so you have to put in your screen. But before, you need to wait for a few seconds because uh, for the participants, they are not your presentation at this time. Uh, okay, we are. Okay, can you can you see my screen properly now with just one yes, slide? That's, that's good. Just wait for a few seconds before uh, okay. start. Uh, 
Do you want me to start now or are we waiting? Yes. Okay, just just a moment, Margozata. For the participants, you need to refresh your uh, computer uh, before um, when we move on the other uh, speakers. So you need to refresh uh, your screen uh, uh, with the touch F5. F5? F5? Yes. And now it's okay for everybody. Everybody can see your screen, Margarita, so you can start. Okay. Thank you for your introduction and uh, thank you for your invitation to present quad activities uh, in the MAMA project uh, in uh, this presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to say just a few words about quad as a company. And uh, this is our presentation in a nutshell. I shall be happy to. Uh, talk about uh, any details with any interested participants. I would just like to point to two major areas of our activity. The first one uh, is here, it's electromagnetic simulations based on our own modeling methods. And uh, the second one are text, test fixtures for material measurements based on dielectric resonators. Uh, both uh, these products have been available as products on the market for 23 years and of course they are both based on at least two decades more of scientific uh, research of our team starting at the Warsaw University of Technology. Uh, so maybe as a side note, as a side remark, I will also say that Professor Gvarek, who is behind uh, our modeling method, who was our creator and who was the founder of the company, is right now receiving one of the most prestigious uh, state awards uh, from the hands of the president of Poland. Uh, so it's just a time uh, coincidence. Mm, our, our main target, company target, in joining the MAMA consortium uh, was first of all to apply our modeling and measurement tools to the new types of materials offered by the industrial partners, but also to bridge the gap between our two main areas of activities and to develop our modeling tools to further support our measurements. Uh, the motivation of my talk uh, is, uh, well, we have produced many excellent results in the MAMA project and all are listed on the MAMA website. And these results also include uh, dielectric resonator measurements of semiconductor and composite materials. Uh, and please refer to the MAMA section on QUED website for uh, all our publications and presentations. Uh, but what I found uh, even by the end of the MAMA project is the question which often comes back and this is a question, what are we probing? So we are uh, getting nice results, nice pictures and uh, uh, I decided to, to make a big step back and actually take a look at the background of what we are doing and what, what, why we are doing this. Uh, so in this presentation, I will give a short introduction to microwave resonator methods for material measurements. I will, of course, start from Maxwell equations and talk about the concepts of cavities, resonances, eigenmodes, eigenfrequencies, energy considerations, uh, and how real resonators react to external excitation. Then I will show why we have chosen at QUED to follow the split and single post dielectric resonator technologies. And I will finish with some examples. And if time permits, uh, Janusz would like to give you a short tour, virtual tour of our resonator 
laboratory set up during the MAMA project. Uh, so the Maxwell equations, uh, some school work probably, but I would like to reiterate it. The set on the left hand side is the more general one. Even if they look a little bit terrifying with, with all the operators and integrals, they are probably much simpler than what you have to deal with in material science. And we further simplify our equations. In reality, we are just concerned about uh, the two curl equations in time domain. And I have cast uh, them into the form where we have only electric and magnetic fields, and we see that relations between these fields are just differential relations linked by the material uh, parameters. Uh, the sense of these parameters, uh, epsilon is permittivity, uh, this funny sign about it denotes that it is in general a tensor in isotropic media, media is just a number. Uh, we can also call it dielectric constant, that's more traditional in material science. And if we talk, if we consider it in the frequency domain, we may either talk of real permittivity and real conductivity responsible for losses, or we can talk about uh, complex um, permittivity. So now let me explain uh, why we use resonators. Sorry for the disruption on my screen, but it's a virtual lab coming onto uh, the screen. So to, to understand the concept of uh, the use of resonators, uh, it's it's an interesting observation, theoretical observation from the theoretical electromagnetics. Just by trying to solve the Maxwell equations, we see that under some specific conditions, we may have non-zero fields and non-zero energy in a particular region, uh, even without having any feeding, any connection to the outside world. So it's something like a structure that rings for infinite time. Uh, this response will be sinusoidal in time. The fields, the frequencies at which this phenomenon can occur are called, are called eigenfrequencies and the corresponding field patterns are called uh, eigenmodes. Uh, in a practical case, when this region of interest is, uh, not, is lossy, but uh, the losses are not too higher, I'm putting this in colloquial terms, terms we will have damped uh, sinusoidal excitations where this time attenuation will be described by the Q factor. And this is a, an example solved with our software showing uh, an empty cylindrical cavity. So the walls are perfect metal. They do not uh, transmit, do not allow for transmission of energy. And we have nice field patterns, uh, nice TE1011 mode, one of the possible modes in the structure. Uh, of course, in real life and also in our material measurements, uh, the problem will not be isolated. We need to look into our scenario to extract information about it. We also need to feed uh, the initial energy to get uh, the resonance phenomenon. So there needs to be some coupling to the external world. But if this coupling is not too strong, uh, the corresponding frequencies which we excite uh, will be very close to the eigenfrequencies, but we shall call them resonant frequencies. Uh, and in this case, uh, the energy loss uh, in the structure will be compensated uh, by energy being fed uh, from the source. Uh, some simplest cavities, a uh, kind of, again, uh, basic level, uh, about the electromagnetics, the simplest cavities we can think of and we can solve uh, analytically on a piece of paper, no computers needed, would be a rectangular or more precise cuboidal cavity where the external walls are of perfect metal and inside we may have air or we may have some dielectric material. And also the case which is solved analytically but in cylindrical coordinates will be a uh, cylindrical cavity. In both cases, the mathematically calculated resonant frequencies are given here. Uh, a nice interpretation is that we have a finite number of uh, half wavelengths 
uh, across each dimension. So we have dimensions of the structure and those numbers and PM uh, are model numbers. And this frequency is scaled by uh, wave velocity in a particular medium, which itself is the speed of light in our dielectric materials. It's uh, just scaled by the permittivity of the material. So you see that capturing the resonant frequencies, it's a very nice and very straightforward way uh, of uh, measuring our materials, just by seeing how the frequency uh, changes when the material is inserted into the into the cavity about losses that's a little bit of manipulation with the maxwell equations and we see that in a low loss case the electric and magnetic energies in the structure are practically equal and uh, we define the skill factor which correspond which tells us uh, how much energy is dissipated per period versus how much energy is stored in the structure uh, when the resonator is fully filled with a material, this will be uh, the inverse of the material loss tangent, the parameter we are looking at. Uh, some interpretations for a rectangular cavity. At some time instance, we will have only magnetic fields. That's for a fundamental mode, just circles. Then this magnetic energy is gradually transferred into electric energy. So the electric field appears. And uh, half a quarter period later, we have only electric fields, no magnetic field. So all energy is transferred into electric energy. And this transfer from magnetic to ele electric and vice versa is our resonance phenomenon. Uh, the field patterns are associated with currents flowing and cavity walls. And this tells us that when our resonator is not made of perfect metal, because we do not have perfect metals, uh, the side walls will contribute to the losses in the cavity. Uh, some solutions now for our uh, cylindrical or circular cavity, some model field patterns. Uh, what is my main observation and why we will be using cylindrical cavities? Uh, as you know, the surface area of a cylinder is smaller compared to a sur surface area of a uh, rectangular cavity. So in general, contribution of metal losses will be lower, and also these uh, circular cavities are more compatible with standard manufacturing techniques. So that explains why cylindrical resonators are uh, used in material measurements. Again, coming back to real life, we don't have an isolated structure. So what is our resonance? We input some signal from the outside. We observe some signal out. And the resonance will be a situation when the signal out is the strongest for a given excitation. This is nicely interpreted by equivalent circuits. Uh, uh, and uh, in this RLC circuit at resonance, uh, the voltage across together capacitor and inductor is just zero, which maximizes the voltage on our output resistor. Uh, now, dielectric resonator. These are simulations from our QuickWave software. We have a dielectric resonator in a cavity. We excite it versus frequency. So the horizontal axis is the frequency axis. And you see that at some frequencies, the response is maximized. So those peaks are resonances. Each peak corresponds to a different field pattern. Uh, you will see that the fundamental mode has no angular variation. Fields are constant. Uh, around uh, the circumference. Uh, the second mode has unity variation. So these are magnitudes. So even so at a time instant, we have maximum, zero, minimum. And further modes may have a higher variation in radial or also in uh, the azimuthal direction. So we will use cavity, we will use cylindrical resonators, and additionally, we will put this high permittivity ceramics inside. What is the, the result? Uh, the high permittivity ceramic, again from the Maxwell equations, will have a tendency to attract and focus the electromagnetic energy. So the energy storage will be mainly in this red resonator structure. You see it on the pictures. We have very weak fields when we come to the cylindrical 
shield, which means that our losses in metal are further minimized. Our sample will be inserted uh, in between uh, these two posts. Mm, and uh, we, can, we do not break current lines by making a slot. This is very convenient for measuring um, even very low permittivity materials and very low loss materials, but they very strongly interact with the field uh, in the slot. But of course, if we put a too lossy material like a composite, uh, the resonator will be dumped. So the whole resonance will go down, will no longer be visible. So this table gives the range of applicabilities of the split post dielectric resonator. And we conclude that it's applicable to high resistivity materials. Uh, for uh, high, higher conductivity materials, lower resistivity, we have this alternative configuration, a single post. Uh, and we will be placing a sample very close to a ground plane where the fields are zero. So the fields are very weak, but uh, the lossy sample interacts with the field and we are able to measure uh, the losses. Uh, these simulations from QuickWave again explain how we put a sample in SPDR in this region of strong electric field and in a single post in this region on very weak electric field but very well controlled. So the field is weak, but we exactly know how it varies as a function of a distance from uh, the resonate. And the single post resonator is applicable to higher conductivity materials. We have some results to composites from Adamant. Uh, they were already shown by uh, Gregorius. So let me just uh, say that uh, we see, for example, the effect uh, that when we have a composite with all fibers oriented in one direction, uh, we get uh, lower conductivity uh, because uh, the current, uh, the fields, uh, the currents due to electric field cannot flow in the perpendicular direction. And uh, the conductivity uh, increases uh, when we have uh, the, the, the pattern with crossed uh, directions. Uh, one more note, uh, classical uh, operation of dielectric resonators is in a static mode, as shown in this picture. We just put the sample in and out. In the MAMA project, we have developed a scanner where the sample is moved uh, below the resonator, and this is how we get an image of the sample. Uh, we have obtained images, SPDR images of uh, Dracula Technologies materials. We have a permittivity scan and resistivity scan, and we can scale it to other quantities, other parameters describing the material. Again, the results were partially shown by um, uh, Dracula Technologies uh, presentation, so I will not elaborate on them. I'm just very happy that uh, they are relevant to Dracula Technologies. We have applied uh, the scanner to Materia Nova samples and thanks to Materia Nova for making pattern samples, also with QWIT name. Uh, we show that uh, this name can be seen from the raw scan, but we can also improve the resolution below the size dictated by the resonator had the resonator field distribution using post-processing methods, again, based on our modeling tools. And uh, at this point, I would just like to conclude um, that we have demonstrated microwave dielectric resonators to be a powerful tool for material characterization. And if we still have a minute or two, we would like to give you a virtual tour of our lab. Is this OK? Janusz, can you? Janusz, can you put oh, on the it's screen? Okay. Yes. So, Janos is now taking a camera and just showing some equipment of, at work to, uh, first of all, to, to demonstrate that all this equipment is working and secondly, to give a signal that this equipment has not been dismantled. Uh, just because of work package for of MAMA being finished and uh, the industrial implementation being demonstrated. Uh, but this equipment is ready and we are at any time willing to take further 
measurements of samples uh, that you would send us. And well, yes. thank you, uh, your master, with Benhazata? our yes. Don't forget yes. there is. Uh, it's not uh, in the same time with, uh, between the participant and the speaker, so don't forget it, and uh, you need to wait for a few seconds. Now it's okay. Now it's now. okay. Now, because now we have a... You can start. Okay, now we can start. It's black on my side. We are met much better today, electric like resonators and computer hardware. Are you now seeing us? You can start. Janus is operating something. Okay, okay, okay. You're showing a window view. Do you see us? Do you see us? Can you see us and our rollups? Or do we need to refresh the screen? No. That... <laughs> That's okay, you can start. Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome to the virtual tour of our lab. This is our <laughs> this is our staff within the MAMA project. I will start from the, the channel. You can see, I will, I will show you how it works. Now, the, the channel is moving to the start position. You can see the sample. This is the uh, Dracula sample, and when, when it will be in the start position, it will start the measurement. Okay, now the measurement is started. The, the resonator is connected to the field top and we can read the, the results from the field top. You can see the, the resonance here and the second curve is the curve around the resonance for better accuracy and we can we can collect all the data in the master image control Mm, and then we can uh, provide the to the to the map. The next task is the two meter, ten gigahertz two meter. We can see three uh, three Q meters. They are now uh, in working regime. Uh, each of these uh, two meter is connected to, to the FTDR ten gigahertz. And uh, also connected to the uh, laptop, and we can uh, now is the stability stability test for each of the two meter, and the results are uh, with every ten minutes. As a comparison, I, I can show you the the first the first prototype of our two meter ten gigahertz two meter. It's quite big. And this is the final version. Okay, we, here we have a lot of samples received from the partners in MANA project, from Adaman, from Dracula, from Materia Nova. Also, uh, on each, on every exhibition, we present the MANA results as a as a roll-up and also as as a leaflets 
So this will be a new rollup. And we also have a pen drive with Pama logo on which we will distribute all, all results from Square. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Teams for this presentation. Um, do you have some questions about this presentation? Don't forget to write it for all speakers. No, no question, no more. Okay, so the, for the final presentation, this is, uh, I let uh, uh, introduce uh, Olivier Duore from Materia Nova uh, about the different uh, models. So, uh, just Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank um, Dragula Technology for organizing this workshop. And um, I will now present you the, the last presentation of this workshop, which will be devoted to um, the presentation of the uh, accomplishment of MAMA uh, with a material perspective. So. Uh, it seems I have some problems going into the program. Okay, it's okay, it's all right. Um, so this presentation would be somehow some kind of a recap of what you have been seeing already today uh, from the different partners, uh, but I will do it in a, in a kind of um, uh, material perspective at a laboratory level, because that was the role of Mattia Nova. Uh, okay, is it working? Yeah. So first, I would, I would make a short introduction regarding the challenge related to the diversity of materials and uh, also show you a kind of um, organization of the MAMA project on material perspectives. As far as the um, materials are concerned, so you could see uh, in this project that there are mainly two ways of materials that have been uh, promoted, one being the, uh, the materials used in organic electronic and in this case for photovoltaic applications. So I will provide you a bit of feedback of where um, where this com these materials are coming from and uh, what are the challenges related to the characterization and why the, um, the outcome uh, obtained with impedance spectroscopy and direct representatives was such, um, such a progress for the project. And a similar approach with a carbon composite has been presented by uh, Adam and Composite and showing you also where, um, where this um, these materials or these composites are coming from and, and what was the added value of the uh, direct weak resonators, free space antenna and the scanning probe microscopy. I will conclude with the, some perspective about what uh, could be pursued to uh, further valorize and develop the accomplishment of the project. So I'd like to start with this um, quote from uh, Joseph Albers from the Bauhaus nearly one years ago, saying that at the beginning there is only the material and it's true that material is quite um can give you a glimpse of infinity because you have a limited amount of elements in the classification but with this limited amount of elements you can nearly create any kind of material so um you have materials uh so the, the it's kind of an infinity of combination and, and and use and today when we are speaking with materials and the um it's 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 a too wide word to uh, that incorporate not only the composition but also different types of properties, different types of aspects, and also a question of scale. I mean, depending on the scale of of, uh, of the material, um, the, the, six, the scale of the material organization, you will end up with some different uh, properties. So, developing materials is not is not only a matter of just playing with a simple element. It's also targeting the type of properties you want to to get the way you want to arrange it at the micro scale or at the nano scale. And today, I mean, probably you heard about uh, a lot about this notion of smart materials when we expect the materials not only to uh, exhibit one specific properties, but also to have multiple properties to, for, and 
to be compatible with versatile applications. So I just give you a glimpse of the right hand side from the atomic level to micro scale about I mean the challenges related to materials either to 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 create some molecules to organize uh, at the mezzo scale or at the milli scale and to end up with um, with also materials that can be also com uh, combined at the micro scale. So as soon as you are speaking about materials and fabricating materials, here comes the question of the characterization. How can you be sure that what you get is exactly what you wanted and how you can evaluate the properties uh, of the materials you, are, you, you would like to, to either to fabricate or to use? So therefore, characterization is a keystone in the evaluation for the evaluation of the manufacturing process and delineation of new innovation pathways. So in the scale of MAMA, in the, in, in the scope of MAMA, the idea was to focus on innovative materials and structures for energy applications and to find um, or to demonstrate the ability of microwave characterization methods for the electrical characterizations of these materials. So in this display, you have the two end users that are Dracula Technologies and Adamant that are fabricating or using the materials for the product. And um, they came back to um, Materia Nova and IAMN for the design and validation of material modules for microwave characterization with the support of key sites in some of instrumentation and the development of the materials at the lab scale were then uh, promoted towards the uh, manufacturers of characterization methods like q for instance, or IMN. Then to be to act as a feedback for Dracula technology and Adamant Composite to implement on the fabrication line to improve the process. So the idea was to take the materials, try to, to see how we could look at them, how we can understand uh, the interaction between these materials and microwave uh, characterization methods, and how we can come back on the pilot line to uh, to to incorporate these characterization methods on the fabrication process. So the first part of materials that we, we have been dealing with, I mean, uh, set up from Dracula Technology has already presented it, are uh, dealing with organic electronics. So um, I think it's it's becoming more and more familiar today, but uh, it was quite a revolution when nearly 50 years ago, we uh, we observed that it was possible to get conductivity out of plastic. And uh, this was actually awarded by the Nobel Prize at, um, at the turn of the century. But the, uh, the conductivity of these materials uh, is due to the ability to create polymer chain where you have an alternative sigma and pi chain. So you have the example here of polyacetylene that was the first one that was uh, in which electrical conductivity was observed. and this organization, this molecular organization, is generating some somehow pathways for charges to move along the polymer chain. But not only you have pathways, so it's just in in the in the, in the simple uh, special um, space, but on the in the uh, energy um, space, when you have a distribution of the um, of the uh, mo molecular orbitals in the um, on the uh, energy scale, you also have a discrimination between between levels ending up with a gap like in traditional semiconductors. So not only you can make conductors, we can make semiconductors with optoelectronic applications. So the, the, the development of the, the distribution of, this, of, of these materials into several applications emerge. And now we could see the use of these materials not only in photovoltaics, but also in lighting with uh, organic light emitting diodes, and also in um, for biomedical applications. And yeah, some examples uh, highlighted in the in the scale, and of course some uh, wiring because as soon as you have a device, you need to uh, to be able to to plug it and to uh, and to feed it um, or to to inject or collect uh, charges. In the case of Mama, we have been mainly working on photovoltaics. These are the materials that we have been investigating in the project. So um, it's not as simple as acetylene, but this periodic um, altern alternative between um, sigma and sigma and pi chains is still there in this uh, in these molecules, conferring them uh, properties to uh, to transport the uh, the charges. In the meantime, they also have optical properties that are highlighted with this energy level that you can see in the middle of the uh, of the slide, and you can see that the gap are typically of uh, two electron volts, which correspond to um, uh, to wavelengths uh, in the visible spectrum, which means that these materials are able to absorb or to emit light in the uh, in the visible spectrum. So it's totally appropriate for solar cells or organic light emitting diodes. In this case, more solar cells. On the right hand side, you have a typical device 
uh, architecture of a device that is necessary to get uh, photovoltaic properties and to get a well operating uh, device you need to have um, uh, you need to fulfill several constraints so not only it has to absorb but also you have to be able to create the free charges and you have to be able to transport the free charges to the electrode and to collect and one of this peculiarity currently seen as a drawback from these materials is that they are quite resistive so in the, if they are resistive, then the collection of the current can be an issue, not only in this device, but in, also, in other kind of devices. And, um, and the idea was to, to see whether we could use microwave characterization methods to evaluate the electrical properties of these materials and determine the carry mobility, which is a figure of merit, to uh, evaluate the electrical properties of these materials. So you have typically the, the scale of uh, carry mobility and resistivity associated to these materials at the bottom of the, scale, uh, of the slide. The first method that has been developed was in pedant spectroscopy. So this method was originally de developed for um, uh, grid cell cells, also, so, also called dyes and dyes solar cell cells, in which you have a diode and you are just probing the current, the AC current out of an AC bias applied between the two electrodes. The peculiarity of this, uh, of the protocol developed in MAMA, based on some existing results in literature, was to uh, incorporate uh, gate oxide in the system to make the, the device much more capacitive, out of which, as you can see in the middle, the, uh, the, the impedance measured uh, could be converted into admittance, which is the opposite, from which two components could be extracted, either the conductance or either the susceptance, and the susceptance is related to the loss. From the loss, the uh, carry mobility could be extracted. So you have this simple formula in the, in, in the middle. So this allows for a uh, measurement of on, uh, on the right range of frequency from which the carry mobility could be quickly uh, obtained. The results are uh, reproducible. The protocol is robust. The, uh, some comparative tests between Keysight and Materianova provided the same results. And it's quite sensitive to any change, not only in the electrical properties of the, uh, of the active layer, but also of the interfacial layers completing the device. So this is not this is um, a powerful tool not only to measure or to determine the electrical properties of materials but also to detect any problem in the process. Similarly, and as presented before by Keyword, uh, dielectric resonators were shown to be uh, suitable for the characterization of this uh, of the similar materials. And you have an example here with P dot PSS, which is traditionally used as a whole collection layer in OPV. Uh, again, the uh, dielectric resonators uh, are operating by just measuring the resonance frequency and out of which you can detect, uh, so you are measuring the uh, reflection uh, S21 signal, out of which you can determine the frequent resonance frequency and the Q factor, uh, leading you to the, um, to the dielectric constant and the conductivity of the material in the test. So on the right hand side, you could see um, validation of the of the measurements using the 10 gigahertz um, SP, SPDR, because as Magrosa has said before, this this um, this type of um, resonator is more suitable uh, for uh, quite resistive materials, in which um, all, most all, all the uh, organic semiconductors are falling in, and and so we could validate the uh, the these measurements with first P dot PSS, then extend it to uh, standard semiconductor materials as used by Dracula Technologies in their device. On the bottom uh, of the slide, you could see um, a, re a recap of what has been uh, shown before. That is the ability incorporating a two-dimensional scanner on the dielectric uh, resonator to make a mapping of the electrical properties when you have, uh, for instance, in this, this case, is a checkerboard of um, a P dot PSS. So the, Deposited on quartz, so you could you could see you can map electrically the, this checkerboard, and and the special resolution was shown to be uh, on the millimeter scale, which is quite powerful for evaluating large scale uh, organic photovoltaics. The last example uh, was uh, carried out at the nano scale, where uh, using a scanning microwave microscope, it was possible to um, to to observe the sensitivity of the um, of the system, which is a, a, a Keysight SMM equipped with the uh, with an interferometer, 
to, uh, to obtain a 50 ohm free detection system. And by uh, applying a uh, low frequency bias, we could detect the variation of electrical properties in this case, uh, poly 3 exothiophane, which is standard materials used in uh, organic photovoltaics. And by varying the frequency, we, also, we could also probe different depth, allowing for three dimensional measurement of the electrical properties of these materials at the nanoscale. Similarly, the other type of materials that have been investigated were the carbon materials and composites. So you are, I guess, quite familiar with uh, carbon materials and composites. You have a typical example of um, uh, either materials or uh, tools in which carbon can play a role. Uh, carbon is, um, is a well-known uh, uh, comp um, component uh, uh, abundant in nature, which has the ability to make strong covalent bonding. And from, from this, what could uh, one could uh, develop different types of um, structures at the um, at the atomic scale, leading up leading up to different properties, whether it can be mechanic or uh, e electric or electronic. So the applications of carbon-based systems can be multiple. You can use them for uh, mechanical reinforced structures. You can use them for uh, enhancing conductivity uh, of materials or to um, to enhance uh, transport and shield uh, and shielding properties in composites and also now in quantum electronic devices. In the case of this project, we have been focusing on the type of uh, carbon composite that are produced by adamant, that are a carbon fiber reinforced plastics and composite for electrodes for a battery application and aerospace application as presented before by adamant composite. Again, we um, will be quickly going through the, the way this, uh, these materials are um, uh, fabricated. So you have three pregs compo uh, composed of uh, carbon microfibers um, binded with a polymer and uh, in which uh, upon the roll to roll process, adamant composite is uh, reinforcing the electrical properties or the conductive properties by adding some uh, ca uh, carbon nanostructures. This is on the left hand side, on the right hand side, you have the typical uh, electrodes um, based on a mixture of carbon nanostructures with other materials that has been also characterized as material nova. And the electrical characterization of these composites, have, uh, so the pictures shown here have been uh, already presented before, but I will just recap quickly. We carried out first at the micro scale, highlighting the ability of dielectric resonators to discriminate between um, composites, form of prepregs with different um, in plane conductivity. So when you have all the fibers aligned in one direction, you get a good conductivity in one direction, but the overall conductivity in the plane is not that great because uh, charges have some problems to move orthogonally to the, fi to the, to the fibers. However, when you uh, pile up preprecs with different orientation, you end up with something which is much more conductive. And this was possible to observe with the resonator, in this case, the single post because it's very conductive. And on the right hand side, you could see the results obtained uh, in the collaboration between IAM and, and um, adamant by incorporating a horn antenna on the pilot line as shown in the video before and from which i mean uh, uh, the the reflection coefficient based on the impinging and reflected uh, microwave could be uh, was measured and could serve to uh, to measure the uh, the the conductivity and the, the and the permittivity of the of the material at the nanoscale as shown before uh, it was possible also to investigate further the um, the way uh, the uh, carbon nano um, additive was providing um, a contribution to the overall electrical properties by uh, showing the way they were incorporated in the system so in, on the left hand side you could see a fame image where the signature of this carbon uh, added value uh, added composite uh, sorry, added material uh, are sticking to uh, uh, microfibers and the right hand side you could see similar um, results obtained with a scanning microwave microscopy with key site. So as a conclusion, I would say that materials are key issue for emerging technology and there was there have, there have been key issues and there will still be I guess in the long future but as soon as you have material development you will have a striking need for appropriate characterization and microwave and robot probing methods opened um, promising um, doors for new innovation for, for innovation in, in in the field of organic materials and hybrid composites so not only it uh, it allows for the determination of electrical properties but also a mapping of these properties which is quite important when you are developing large surface materials or composites um, it's shown a good complementary complementarity with well acknowledged methods and uh, and also to be compatible with industrial fabrication processes since 
some of these methods have been incorporated in industrial pilot line. So, um, so I guess they, they are, they are uh, technologies to be further uh, developed to address additional challenges. Among these challenges, so so far we've been speaking a lot about materials, but I would say there are similar investigations to be made on processing, because most of the time what provides the, proper, the, the desired properties of material or composites are due not only to the material itself, but also to the processing and the way it is fabricated. And of course, this will not be possible without additional development of modeling supports to further uh, delineate the uh, composition and the design of the uh, materials and composites. Um, so th this will be also used to uh, disseminate the, um, the, the developed SOPs of MAMA in the industrial environment. So with this, I'm concluding this presentation and I thank you for your attention. So if you have some questions also, feel free to, to write them and uh, brace solution from Dracula Technology with Compile and, uh, and share to the, to the different speakers. So, no question. Okay. Um, if there is no there, no question, uh, maybe um, maybe the different uh, speakers uh, can conclude something. If you have some words to add, uh, maybe Kamel or the others. And uh, and after we we conclude the, this uh, workshop and webinar. So uh, Kamala Dadi is speaking. So thank you again for your attendance. Um, so the, if you have um, any questions or remarks, you can always uh, still contact us. Um, through our uh, MAMA website uh, or directly by uh, email. So if you are interested by um, materials, measurement techniques or instrumentation, please do not hesitate uh, to contact uh, to contact us. And uh, so I would like to, to thank you again for your attendance. Camel and uh, propose to close this uh, webinar. Maybe a question more. Oh, uh, there is a question from uh, Johannes um, for Camel. Uh, Johannes want to to know if the presentation uh, will be available later. Uh, um, maybe maybe we can ask uh, Philip if the uh, presentation will be uh, available for the public or not. I don't remember. Um, yes, we can uh, we can upload all the presentation on our website, and uh, I think we will also link. Um, this presentation on our LinkedIn uh, account. Okay, so maybe we will we will send uh, the link directly to all the participants so that you can uh, you can have access and uh, download the presentation. And we record uh, this uh, webinar, so you can put this uh, record on the online. Maybe no more questions. <laughs> I just want to thank uh, Dracula for organizing. Um, if it's okay for everybody, I propose to close this webinar and thank you for all uh, to participate and uh, have a nice day for everybody. Thank you, Brish, for organizing. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Goodbye, bye to everybody, and thank you for your attendance. <laughs> okay, thank you.